Hello owners, it's Drew with another Switch Axe build video. Today I have an exhaust file build that pulls together a number of scales that synergize very well with exhaust. The idea with the build is that with an exhaust file, we typically want to focus the head to stun the monster. With Part Breaker, we will break the head faster and actually blood right, so we simultaneously KO, exhaust, and heal from attacking the monster in the head. Switch Axe is particularly good at part breaking because of the zero sum discharge, and with blood right, we can heal right through any damage we take. With Exhaust and Part Breaker, we will be flinching the monster very frequently. This is a great general purpose build with high comfort from the health drain from Blood Rite. Okay, there are a couple quick things to go over. Exhaust Foul Switch Axes apply Exhaust status with your Sword Attacks and Foul Bursts. And when hitting a monster's head, this will apply both Stun and Exhaust. Blood Rite is a skill that will heal you for the damage you deal to broken parts. At level 2, this skill heals for 6% of the damage you deal, and at level 3, this heals for 10%. Lastly, we have Part Breaker, which will help us break parts faster to activate Blood Right. With all this combined, we will want to focus the head of the monster to break it, stun it, and exhaust it, and heal from our attacks. There are two Switch Axes that I recommend, the Reconqueress and the Tigrex Switch Axe. The Reconqueress has better slots and deals more exhaust, but the Tigrex Switch Axe will deal more damage. You will want to augment the sharpness and attack on the Reconqueress, and for the Tigrex Switch Axe, you just want to augment attack. For Rampage decorations, I recommend Anti-Species, as our playstyle will be more focused on zero-sum discharge. This can work for the Switcher Rampage decoration if you want to use it, but we will not be getting any damage benefit from it since we are not using a power file switch axe. For this build, I have two variants. The first will have three points in blood rate and will be more comfortable with the additional healing. Both of these builds require no augments and just a talisman with two two-slot decorations. If you have a better talisman, you will need to rearrange the decorations to accommodate. If you would like guidance on how to adjust your build for your talisman, feel free to leave a comment. I am more than happy to send you an adjusted build for whatever talisman you have. So for the 3 Blood Rite build, we use a Almodron Helmet, the Mausino Body, the Mausino Gloves, the Mausino Waist, and the Death Stench Legs. As always, I'll have the full build in the description of the video. The 2 Blood Rite build simply switches the Mausino Mail for the Archfiend Armor Ballo. We will be exchanging 1 Blood Rite for Chain Crit in this build for more damage. I slaughtered in Part Breaker here as I think it is valuable to break parts faster, but feel free to adjust this to whatever you like. Depending on which switch axe you use, you will have a number of one slot decorations. My recommendation for one slots are Speed Sharpening, Stun Resistance, Stamina Thief, and Defiance. This will be totally up to your play preference. However, one thing worth noting with Stun Resistance is that when you are doing your zero sum discharge, you will not be able to get knocked off and stunned. For Arbor Augments, I recommend Chain Clip for more damage. Power Prolonger so we can maintain our amp state easier, Part Breaker for increased part breaking, and Crit Boost to increase our damage. In addition, a valuable augment could be the Mausino Coil, as you can upgrade the 1 slot to a 2 slot, and with that 2 slot you can put in any skill you want. Okay, for the skill list we will have the core Switch Axe skills, Attack Boost 7, Weakness Exploit 3, Protective Polish 3, Rapid Morph 3, as well as Blood Rite 3 and Part Breaker 2. We also have Power Prolonger and Evade Extender for added comfort in the build. And for the version of Blood Rite 2, the only difference is that we will have Chain Crit instead. Alright, finally, let's get into the Switch skills and general playstyle. Important skills for this build are the Finishing Discharge, so we can perform the Zero Sum Discharge, 2 Stage Morph Slash combo for maintaining Gauge and Amp State, Soaring Weaver Blade for following up our Zero Sum Discharge, and Switch Charger to maintain our Gauge. I recommend having the Elemental Burst counter on your other scroll to have it as an option to maintain Gauge and deal damage. So, some basic guides for the build. The build uses protective polish, so remember to apply that by sharpening your weapon. You want to focus on the head of the monster so that we can apply stun and exhaust, as well as try to break the head for blood rate. It'll be important to maintain your amp gauge so that you could use a zero sum discharge. Luckily, with an exhaust file, it is pretty easy to charge up our amp state. A great option for this is a two stage mark stash combo, this will give us a significant amount of amp gauge. So, a combo loop for zero sum discharge is to follow it up with a soaring waver blade, then do an axe morph slash. This should be ZR or R2 depending on what you're using. After that, perform a switch charger. This will provide enough file gauge to morph into a sword and then perform another zero sum. You can try to do this over and over and over again on the monster. So, going over this step by step, first we latch onto the monster and perform the zero sum discharge. Once that's complete, we perform the soaring waver blade, into the axe morph slash, we form a switch charger into the Sword Morph Slash, and then we latch onto the monster once again with a Zero Sum Discharge. I don't plan on making a full Switch Axe Play Guide or anything in this video, but I think that this Zero Sum loop is pretty useful for this build. 
A couple of final notes on this build is that you should only expect to stun a monster one or two times on a hunt, and you should not really invest into Slugger as an armor skill. In addition, with very high level afflicted hunts, the damage that the monsters deal there are very high, and you may find that using zero sum is too dangerous in those cases. In these cases, you may want to avoid using zero sum, or you can invest in more defensive armor skills like defense boost and divine blessing so that you could survive those hits and heal back the damage. I hope you found this build helpful. If you'd like to learn exactly how exhaust files work, I have a video linked here. If you're wondering about what rampage decoration to use for anti-species, I have another video on that over there. Next, I'll be looking to explore element builds and switch X tip videos, so if you're interested in that kind of content, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, and take care.